Hey guys, Luke here. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the West Tigers and their signings for season 2021. Now, off the top of my head, I can't think of the Tigers losing too many important players. It seems like they've got a lot of salary cap issues, and yet, it turns out they're probably going to be signing Josh Adokar and James Tamu. Now, there was a little bit of talk that they want to offload Josh Reynolds, a lot of talk actually throughout the season, but uh, Michael Maguire has come out and said him and both Russell Packer, who are on big contracts, will definitely be there in season 2021. Uh, obviously, Josh Adokar is looking to leave the storm to move back to Sydney. The Rabbitohs have just re-signed Alex Johnson, so it doesn't look like it's going to be there. And anyways, I, I couldn't really understand him going there anyways. Uh, in terms of the Rabbitohs, just in terms of how much uh, cut space he would take up and what he'd actually offer uh, for the Rabbitohs, I don't think he's that much of an improvement. And definitely, wing is not an area that they need to improve on, in my opinion. Uh, there's other areas that they could strengthen and use a salary cap for that. Although, I think everybody just saw the Latrell Mitchell and Adakar sort of relationship together and thought, yep, that'd be a good fit together. They should play together. Doesn't work that way, though. Josh Adokar, though, is a West Tigers junior. I think it's a good move for him. Um, also, a good move from the club. Reports coming out that it's for 550000 a year, which in terms of sort of wingers and, and fullbacks and stuff these days, I think that's a pretty good deal, especially for a player of his calibre. Uh, the Bulldogs apparently signed Luke Kotrick on 600000 So when you compare the two, I feel like Adokar and 550 is a pretty good deal considering Adokar's had many years um, in the NRL, has won premierships, he's really done it all uh, in rugby league. And he's, he's proven where Nick Kotrick is a little bit young, uh, you know, may, maybe he could fall off, maybe he won't. Uh, but he's kind of only had a couple of seasons where Adokar's been there for a little while now. And he's come out of the storm system, so I feel like it's a good move. Also, he's moving back um, to a club he's previously been at. So he knows the Tigers, he knows the Tigers' culture. So I think he is a good fit for the Tigers in terms of that. Uh, out of all the Sydney clubs he could have possibly went for, I feel like he'd be the, most, uh, the best suited. Now, the problem here... Uh, lies with the fact that he wants to play fullback. Apparently, that's what he wants to do anyways. Whether that's a money thing, it seems to be a thing that a lot, a lot of players want to do these days. I don't know if it's like a management thing or their own personal ambitions. Are they just too, ambition, uh, and too ambitious? I don't know. But Josh Adekar, he wants to play fullback. Like many players, it seems like everybody who moves club goes there because they want to end up playing fullback. In recent times, uh, Tennis Lesniak's done it. Latrell Mitchell's done it. There's probably a few more that I can't think of off the top of my head. I wouldn't even be surprised if Nick Kotrick or someone ends up at fullback. Uh, but Adekar was looking for fullback money. Um, although, I feel like 550k if... If he's signed to play fullback, I don't think it's too big of a risk um, considering some of the contracts uh, fullback and stuff are on these days. If he works out, first off, a great deal. Although, chances are, if it worked out, then the management would kick up a fuss and they'd have to re-sign him on a big one anyways. But if it doesn't work out, it's not like they're locked into this huge million dollar deal um, where they're absolutely screwed over in the salary cap. Considering their salary cap position at the moment and the, the talk of it not being great. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is kind of strange to talk about the Tigers and all the players they have lost, and then you come to this season and they haven't really lost too many people, apart from people that they're trying to offload themselves. In the past, they've lost people like James Tedesco, like Mitchell Moses, Aaron Woods, guys who've been at the club for a long time, and Josh Adokar was another one that fans were very, very disappointed to lose. So if they get him back, I feel like that'd be a big win for the Tigers. Just in terms of value for money, I feel like he'd be good, because even 550000 him on the wing, I feel like that's still a pretty good deal for him. Maybe paying a little bit over, Maybe not. I feel like it's actually a pretty good deal. So, look, put it this way. If the Bulldogs or someone had signed in for 550000 I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, so, I think Tigers fans should be pretty wrapped because, you know, if it doesn't work out at fullback, at least you've got a world-class winger. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with just being a winger these days. They're very, very important. I think it's essential that you have two good wingers. They've already got one in Nofa Luma. It's just a matter of finding another one. Uh, Momoroski might even end up um, coming back as well. So, you've got another outside back there. Tigers are actually looking all right for next season, especially when you add in uh, possibly signing James Tamu. I don't know if it's a done deal or not, but when I was going to record this video, I was just purely going to talk about Josh Adokar and whether I thought it was a good fit for him. But then I saw that James Tamu is apparently signing, I think it was a two-year deal uh, with the Tigers. Now, James Tamu, he's another one, Adokar, been there and done it. Um, he's, won, he's played for Australia, even though he's a New Zealander. He's won premierships, he's played State of Origin, and he's the current captain of the Penrith Panthers, the team leading, uh, winning the comp at the moment, or leading the comp, I should say. Um, but Penrith playing very, very well, and you know he is a pretty good leader. Been a good leader at the Cowboys too. Was definitely an influential figure there when he left. Um, look, him and Matt Scott, they were the rocks for... Um, for the Cowboys, and I think once they sort of went downhill, that's when the Cowboys went downhill. Um, yeah, James Hummer, probably underrated at this point in his career, considering the heights he's been at. Like I said, he's played for Australia, played for New South Wales, won premierships. Um, like, he's really done all, like he actually has. 
Um, and he doesn't really get talked about in terms of New South Wales teams and that sort of stuff anymore. Now, I know when he was playing for New South Wales and Australia, it was kind of in the same time frame when Aaron Woods and that was sort of playing as well. So it kind of does show you how the game's gone different. But if the Tigers can land James Tamer, I think it would just be great just in terms of leadership. I feel like the Tigers are kind of lacking leadership. Now, they do have some experienced players. They've had some experienced players in the past couple of years and still haven't made the eight. Robbie Farrer and Benji Marshall and a few of those guys there. But just the fact that like Moses Mbai is your captain, he hasn't been there that long, doesn't even have a position in the side really, and, and he's your captain. I think it says a lot about the experience of the side. And the guys that they've brought, brought across from other teams, like your Russell Packers and Ben Manolinos and stuff, I think it's safe to say that they've kind of been a flop for their, for their price. Um, I think Mandolino's retired now. Uh, probably wasn't on a big contract, but just those sort of guys. You're losing Chris Lawrence next year. Elijah Taylor's a bit older now. Hasn't really been been that great. Uh, just James Tamer, I feel like he'll be a fantastic signing. Um, definitely will add a lot to the Tigers game, just in terms of his leadership and also being able to teach some of the young forwards because I feel like the Tigers actually have a pretty good young forward pack. Um, a lot of guys who are quite raw, though. Um, your 12s and all those sort of guys. There's actually so many, so many young Tigers players who could could turn into absolute gems, um, but they just need that little bit of guidance, and hopefully James Tamu can do it for them and guide guide the Tigers into a top eight um, position next year, possibly, because it looks like they're not going to get it this year. Um, it's just very typical for the Tigers. It looks like they're probably going to get about ninth. Uh, maybe James Tamu and Ada Carr, maybe they're going to help them get into that eight. Maybe they won't. Maybe they won't even sign. Who knows? Because nothing's official at the moment, but it does look like Ada Carr is going to go there. Um, James Tamu would also be another good addition, but I feel like the Ado Carr one is nearly close to done. Mark McGuire has come out and he said that he's actually talked to Ado Carr, so usually that's a pretty good sign when the actual coach comes and talks about it, because usually they go, oh, I've had no, I've had no contact, or, or I haven't talked to him. The management team, has, I'll leave that for the managers, you know, all that sort of stuff. And the fact that he's come out and said, yeah, we've talked to Ado Carr. Um, and yeah, we, we're interested. But then I also thought it was funny because uh, they keep talking about the Melbourne Storm while they only let go about our car if they can get a replacement or if someone will do a swap deal for them and stuff. And it's just like, it's, it's not going to happen. Um, teams aren't going to swap swap a winger or whatever. At least like someone who they're probably after anyway. So they, they might release like a reserve grade winger or something. And, you know, the chances are they probably go to the Storm and end up being, being a quality back. But they're not going to release, like, the, the talk was, oh, you're going to release David Nofaluma for Ado Car, And it's like, why the hell would you do that? Like, is that, you're not really strengthening an area here. You, you're losing your best winger, and, and then you're bringing in another good winger. Like, you, you want both of them, otherwise it's sort of ineffective. Why would you get rid of one winger to bring in another? It just doesn't make sense for the Tigers, especially considering Nofaluma has probably been their best player this year. Um... I'm not even joking, it sounds weird, but yeah, a winger has been the Tigers' best player. I think he's been fantastic, actually. Uh, but yeah, not Fluma, at a car. I think they'd be a lethal um, combination. You add in maybe an Adam Dewey, Moses Mboy. I don't know who's going to be their fullback next year, but uh, it's definitely a good um, two and five. And we've seen teams like Warriors and stuff have been quite effective with uh, with good wingers. And uh, like I said, I feel like it's a very underrated position uh, at the moment because you need to start off your sets very well. And I feel like the Tigers will have um, great starts to their sets. Um, Ado Car's not necessarily like a big eater meter in the sense that he's going to bust tackles and that. But just the fact that he's got that speed and he is capable of going the distance, give him a little bit of space and he's gone. So it'll definitely have teams worried. And um, also with how the Tigers sort of play, they throw it around a little bit. Um, you know, Luke Brooks got a pretty good kicking game. He'll probably take advantage of it more than what the Storm do. I think Cameron Smith's about the only one who can um, put it in like a quality kick. Whereas Luke Brooks, maybe maybe this will be more suited to Luke Brooks. He put in little chip kicks and that sort of stuff just for Ado Car to literally just chase it. He's that quick. Nobody's going to stop him. If if there's like a foot race, Ado Car's going to win it. So in that sense, I think that'd be uh, a good move for the Tigers. But yeah, leave in the comment section below. Do you think Josh Ado Car would be a good signing for the Tigers as well as James Tummy? Do you think he'd be a good signing for the Tigers? Personally, I think that'd be fantastic signings. Even if they just land one of them, I still think it'd be fantastic for them and will definitely be a great step in the right direction. Uh, now, while you're at it, while you're leaving the comments, you may as well go ahead and leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here because that's where I'm going to wrap up the video. Hopefully you did enjoy it and hopefully it makes you want to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell. Even 
even if you are subscribed, turn on the notification bell. It lets you know that I've uploaded immediately. Um, it sends you, I don't know, sends you like a little a little notification on your phone or something like that. I'm not sure exactly how it works, to be honest with you, but I've heard it's important, so that's what I'm going to push at the moment. So go ahead and do that. Also, go ahead and follow me on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke on YT. It's Mr. Luke on Facebook as well. Um, just search it up. It's in the description below as well if you just want to Click on those ones, but yeah, Mr. Luke and YT, add me on that. Add me on Snapchat as well, it's Mr. Luke and YT. So that is all the social media is done. That's how I'm going to end the video, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it, and hopefully you tune in for another video. I'm not sure what my next one would be, but uh, we'll wait and see. Probably one tomorrow. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.